This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi, I am Dr. Deepak Meghur and today's case is about an elderly male patient who has this hypermature morgagnin cataract with a mid dilated pupil it doesn't dilate enough. and uh, these are the challenges we are anticipating the zonules are expected to be weak the capsulotomy is going to be very difficult because we can see these calcified specks and uh, add on to that we may have zonular weakness also in this patient so poor visualization because of the pupil as well as visualization issues which would arise once we puncture the anterior capsule my plan is to perform manual small incision cataract surgery posterior subtenance anesthesia is given I am sitting temporarily a conjunctival flap is raised and typical thing which I do is create a small scleral groove posterior to the original intended incision which I am going to make this is the scleral incision which is done I'm using the Hoskin forceps to stabilize the globe I've not used any cautery and uh, to improve visualization I'm asking my assistant to do continuous irrigation the side ports are created the anterior capsule is stained with trypan blue followed by injection of a dispersive ovd into the chamber time to make the entry into the eye i'm using a 2.8 bevel up keratome to enter the eye and care is taken that the internal lip of the incision continues to be parallel to the limbus so that the corneal valve will be functional I want to do a stretch pupilloplasty so I'm injecting OVD under the iris and then using two Y hooks through the side ports I'm stretching the pupil I'm hoping that this would serve the purpose of improved visualization pupil is slightly better the anterior capsule is punctured with a bent 26 number needle as expected the lens matter flows out I'm just irrigating the capsular bag very gently with PSS using the forceps the capsular excess is being enlarged i was expecting some zonular weakness but it was not very much evident during the excess creation so thankfully the zonules are all right the tiny morgagnin nucleus is manipulated out of the bag and then simultaneously out of the eye using the two sinski hooks the bag is inflated with ovd I'm retracting the pupil to ensure that the ring has truly gone behind the excess margin. Time to implant the lens. The single piece foldable lens is then implanted into the capsular bag. I realize that the capsular excess is slightly smaller than what I would have actually liked so I'm making a small nick and enlarging the excess by using a micro forceps The lens is tilted up to irrigate out all the OVD which has gone behind the lens OVD in front of the lens is then aspirated out just trying to retract the pupil and try to see if there is any remaining lens fibers side ports are hydrated time to close i always prefer to cover the scleral incision with a conjunctiva so i suturing the conjunctival flap back is my preferred method and ensure that the knot is taken in such a way that it gets buried deep inside this is the first day post op picture To summarize I think this case demonstrate the fact that 
the real clue of the zonular health is got when we touch the anterior capsule so i was expecting a severe zonular weakness in this patient but it wasn't meant to be because the moment i started tearing it the tearing was quite easy and effortless which is not possible in eyes with generalized zonular weakness so although i had planned that you know the zonules would be weak and i had made up a mind to implant the ctr before even removing the nucleus out but that was not necessary in this case because the zonules were reasonably healthy and the rexus could be very well performed and that's the reason i could postpone the insertion of the ctr at the end but nevertheless anticipating zonular weakness and being ready with the necessary tools is definitely going to be helpful that was it thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful